What we're going to work on in this video is how to solve rate times time equal distance word problems. So this, we're going to work on problems that have to do with speed or velocity. Now we use this formula all the time intuitively. Rate means speed. So if I say I'm traveling on the freeway uh, 60 miles per hour, and I travel for two hours, how long did I, um, how far did I go? Well, we just multiply the two. So we use this um, formula constantly. What, you, what we see here is that these two units cancel each other out. Now let's see how we use this um, formula formally in an algebra problem. Kathy and Cheryl are walking and running in a fundraiser. Kathy completes the course in 4.5 hours and Cheryl completes the course in nine hours. Kathy went on average three miles per hour faster than Cheryl. Find Kathy and Cheryl's speed. Okay, now this is the typical problem where we have two people who are traveling. Now, in all of these problems, you're either going to have two people traveling or one person traveling in one direction at one speed and then traveling in a different way on the way back. So in this case, we're always going to use rate times time equal distance twice. In this case, we're going to use uh, Kathy's experience and we're going to use Cheryl's experience. And by comparing them, we're going to find the answer to our problem. Now, the first thing we want to do is go slowly, um, sentence by sentence, and find the speed, time, and distance that are listed in this problem. Kathy and Cheryl are walking and running in a fundraiser. So there's no math there. Kathy completes the course in four and a half hours. Now, the key thing is to look at the units. Kathy completes the course in four and a half hours. Hours is time. And Cheryl completes the course in nine hours. Okay, so hours is a unit of time. Kathy went on average three miles per hour faster than Cheryl. So if we ask ourselves who was faster, Kathy was faster. So Cheryl is R, Kathy is, um, Kathy is faster by three hours. Now we want to find Kathy and Cheryl's speed. Now the trick in most of these problems is usually people are tra um, either traveling the same speed or the same amount of time or the same distance. So when we look at just thinking about this problem intuitively of Kathy and Cheryl walking on the, in a fundraiser, we assume that they ran on the same course. So they ran the same amount of distance. So now we have um, two statements. We want to make sure we put parentheses around the rate before we multiply it with the 4.5. So what we can see is that both of these um, statements share a common variable, d. So what we want to do is we want to say um, d is equal to r plus 3. Uh, 4.5, right? D is equal to this. But this same D is also equal to 9R. Another people, way people will look at it is that this D and this D are the same. So we'll take this value and we'll substitute it into that location. Either way you look at it, we get this statement right here. So the first thing we want to do is we want to distribute the 4.5. So we get... Um, well, actually, before we do that, why don't we get rid of the 4.5? Let me move it in front. So it looks a, more, a little more familiar. And let's just get rid of the 4.5 by multiplying both sides by 10. So I'm going to multiply this side by 10 and this side by 10. We're allowed to do that because um, we have an equality statement. You can multiply both sides by the same number. And what will happen is that multiplying... Um, 10 times 4.5 will allow us to move this decimal one place. We have one zero, so we move the decimal one place. We end up with 45 
r plus 3 is equal to 90 r. And then when we solve this, we go 45 r plus um, 135 is equal to 90 r. Now we can subtract 45 from both sides. And we get 135 is equal to 45 r. And if we divide both sides by 45, move it up here, we get r is equal to 3, and then in terms of the units, um, miles per hour. Okay. Now, even though we found um, some answer, we don't know if we found the answer that this problem is looking for. This problem could ask us for Cassie's speed, which would be r plus 3. So r plus 3, 3 plus 3 would be 6. Or they could ask us for shell speed. We would plug in 3 here, and we would get three, uh, 3 miles per hour. Or they could ask us for the distance. I could plug in 3 into either here or here, and then um, 3 times 9 would give me 27. So the key thing at the end of this is to remind yourself, what is the question that we're looking for, the, the answer that we're looking for? Now over here, here's what we're looking for. We're looking for Cathy's speed and Cheryl's speed. Now this right here, R, because it's in Cheryl's row, tells us that this is Cheryl's speed. Now, in order to find Cathy's speed, we're gonna plug it into here, right? R plus three is Cathy's speed because she traveled three miles per hour faster than Cheryl. When we plug in the three into there, we get three plus three is equal to six miles per hour. And this is Cathy's speed. Sarah left on the interstate at a speed of 65 miles per hour. Her sister Kendra followed her on the same route, leaving two hours later at a rate of 75 miles per hour. How long after Kendra leaves will she catch up with Sarah? So again, we always have two um, rows where we um, examine their rate times time go distance. In this case, we examine Sarah and her journey, and also Kendra. So let's go a sentence at a time. Sarah left on the interstate at a speed of 65 miles per hour. Miles per hour is speed. Her sister Kendra followed her on the same route, leaving two hours later at a rate of 75 miles per hour. Now this is a mouthful. Let's do the 75 miles per hour first. That's the easy part. So miles per hour is a speed, that's a rate. Okay. Now over here, they said that she left two hours later. So if Kendra left later, it means that she traveled less. Sarah is the one who has been traveling longer because she left first. So the way we'll write this is, um, Sarah is t plus 2 because she's been traveling two hours longer, and Kendra is t. Now, this makes sense, right? Um, she's traveling slower for longer. She's traveling faster for a shorter amount of time, and that's why they can eventually meet. Now, over here, let's look at this line again. Kendra followed her on the same route. What the same route means that they traveled the same road, started at the same place, ended at the same place. So they traveled the same distance. Now, the difference between this problem and the previous problem is that previously they had given us time and they had said one person traveled faster than the other. In this case, they said they gave us um, the speed and said one person traveled longer than the other. Essentially, you're gonna get the same problem. Both of these are D, so we can use our same technique of saying 
D is equal to 65 times T plus 2. D is also equal to 75 times T. Or what you can do is say um, this value, right? This, these two Ds are the same, so put this value there. Either way you look at it, it works. Now, let's distribute. 65 times T plus 130 is equal to 75 T. Let's subtract T from both sides. And you get 130 is equal to 10 T. I'm going to divide both sides by 10. And then T will be equal to 13. And the units of time are hours. Okay. Now the question is, how long after Kendra leaves will she catch up with Sarah? What we're trying to find out is how long did Kendra travel? So when we look at our chart, T plus 2 is how long Sarah traveled. T is how long Kendra traveled. So that answers our question. So let's try this problem. It's a little bit different from the previous problems. The Jones family took a 24-mile canoe ride down a river in three hours. After lunch, the return trip back up the river took six hours. Find the rate of the canoe in still water. Okay, now, what's happening here is that we don't have two people. We have just the Jones family. Now, what happened was the Jones family first went... Um, down the river, had lunch, and then they went up the river to go back home. Now, let's read through this slowly and figure out um, what numbers they've given us. The Jones family took a 24-mile canoe ride, so we can assume that they took the same path up and down, and the distance was 24 miles down, um, 24 miles down, and then 24 miles up. So they took the 24 mile canoe ride down a river in three hours. So they went down in three hours. After lunch, the return trip back up the river took only six hours. So hours is time. Find the rate of the canoe in still water. Okay, now this is the new thing. So when they first went down river. Let's just say that the boat traveled 10 miles per hour. I'm just making up a number. And let's just say the speed of the river was three miles per hour. The actual speed that they are now traveling is 13 miles per hour, right? You travel the speed of the, um, of the speed of the boat plus the speed of the current. Now, when you go back home upstream, Let's say you're going 10 miles per hour. Again, it's just a number I'm just picking as an example. And the stream is still going against you now, three miles per hour. Your actual speed is seven miles per hour. So that we can see that if R is the speed of my boat and C is the speed of the current, when I'm going downstream, these two speeds are working together, and I get R plus C as the um, actual speed that I'm traveling. Um, in the same way, if R is the speed of the boat and C is the speed of the current, when I'm going back home against the current, um, my speed is R minus C. The speed of the stream is making me go slower. So let's use this concept here. When I go upstream, the speed of the boat minus the speed of the current, that's how fast I'm actually moving. When I'm going downstream, the current is helping me, so my speed is the speed of the boat plus the speed of the river. Now, 
I have two equations and two unknowns. So we have a system of linear equations, and we're going to solve it uh, using elimination. So first, let's write it down here in a way that looks a little more familiar. Okay, so first let's distribute. Now what we want to do is we want to multi um, we want to be able to um, eliminate eliminate these two by addition. So I'm going to multiply this row by two on both sides. If you don't understand, just wait a second and then you'll see. So what we can see here is that when we add the col columns vertically, we get 12R, the C's cancel, and we end up with um, 72. Then if I divide both sides by 12, we get the speed of the boat is equal to six miles per hour, right? Remember, R is the speed of the boat and C is the speed of the current. Now, the question that they wanted to know is, find the rate of the canoe in still water? Okay, well, that's R. So that's our answer. Now here's a similar problem. A small jet can fly 1,032 miles in four hours with a tailwind, but only 808 miles in four hours in a headwind. Find the speed of the jet in still water, in still air. Okay. Now this is the same thing as the upstream and downstream. When you're when you have a headwind, you're going slower because you're flying into the wind. When you have a tailwind, you're you're flying faster because the um, Speed of the wind is pushing you. So we have headwind and we have tailwind. And we have rate times time equal distance. Okay, let's go through this and find all the numbers. A small jet can fly 1,032 miles in four hours with a tailwind. So we're talking about the tailwind and in four hours I can travel 1,032 miles, but only 808 miles in four hours into a headwind. So in the same amount of time against the wind, it's 808 miles. Find the speed of the jet in still, walk, in still air. Now again, we're going to do the um, rate plus wind, rate minus wind. So the tailwind me means that the wind is pushing the plane, so the plane is going faster. So the speed that they're traveling is the speed of the plane plus the speed of the wind. And then when we say headwind, we're going slower because we're flying against the wind. So now we go rate minus W. And now let's solve the same problem. We have two equations and two unknowns. So let's distribute the four. Okay, now when we subtract them, we get 8R is equal to 1840. R is equal to 230 miles per hour. Now let's make sure that we answered the question. Find the speed of the jet in still air. All right, that's what we got. Now we have another upstream downstream problem here. The only um, difference is that there are mixed units. So let's read this. Cassius drives his boat upstream for 45 minutes. It takes him 15 minutes to return downstream. So remember that over here they're measuring time by minutes. His speed going upstream is three miles per hour slower than his speed going downstream. Find his upstream and downstream speed. 
Now the issue here is that when we talk about time, they're using minutes up here, but over here they're using hours. So you've either got to make everything minutes or you've got to make everything hours. I think in this problem, it's easier to make everything hours. So if we were to convert 45 minutes into hours, we would have 45 minutes and there are 60 minutes in one hour. That'll cancel. So I get 45 over 60 hours, which is equal to three over four hours. So instead of 45 minutes, we're going to think about this as three fourths of an hour. Over here, we're talking 15 minutes. Let's do the same calculation. In 15 minutes times one hour is 60 minutes. Now we can cancel these two things out and we get 15 over 60 hours is equal to one over four hours. So instead of thinking 15 minutes, we're going to think one fourth of an hour. So again, we have upstream and then we have downstream and we have rate times time equal distance. So let's walk through this. And let's make sure that we find all the numbers that have units with it. Cassius drives his boat upstream for 45 minutes or 30 on um, three fourths of an hour. So his time upstream is three fourths. It takes him one fourth of an hour to return downstream. So his time downstream is one fourth. His speed going upstream is three miles per hour slower than his speed going downstream. Okay, so his speed going upstream is slower than his speed going downstream. So we don't have to do the rate plus the speed of the current, rate minus speed of the current, because they told us that in comparison to the downstream, the upstream is uh, three miles per hour slower. They actually gave us those numbers. So we can just work um, like this. Now, the thing that we're missing is the distance, but we can assume that if he goes up and he goes down, the distance has not changed in the river. So now we get D is equal to uh, three fourths R minus three. Um, is, it's also equal to one-fourth R. Or you can say, I'm going to take this value and substitute it into there because these two Ds are equal. Now, the way to get rid of the fours is to mul multiply each equation by four. So then when we do that, this will cancel out with this, this will cancel out with this, and then we have something that's pretty easy to deal with. We get 3r minus 3 is equal to r. 3r minus 9 is equal to r. Um, I can subtract uh, 3r from both sides. So I have minus 9 is equal to minus 2r. r is equal to uh, minus 9 divided by minus 2 go back up here, which means that r is equal to 9 divided by 2, because a negative divided by negative is positive. <coughs> so let's remember where we got r. r is our downstream speed. So we have r is equal to 4.5 miles per hour. And we know that he was slower going upstream by three miles per hour. All right, that's his upstream speed. We can plug in 4.5 into here. And this is his upstream rate, or speed. 
So let's try this new problem. Mary takes a sightseeing tour on a helicopter that can fly 360 miles against a 20 mile per hour headwind. In the same amount of time, it can travel 440 miles with a 20 mile per hour tailwind. Find the speed of a helicopter. Okay, now let's um, walk through this again. We have rate times time and equal distance. And again, they're talking about headwind and tailwind. So let's write that down also. And let's remember that we're slower in the headwind and we're faster with the tailwind. So let's go through this, find all the numbers with units. Mary takes a sightseeing tour in a helicopter that can fly 360 miles against a 20 mile per hour headwind. Okay, so in the headwind, she is traveling 360 miles. And because it's a headwind, her speed is r minus the speed of the wind. In the same amount of time, so when they say same amount of time, both of these have the same time. It can travel 40, 440 miles with a 20 mile per hour tailwind. So when you have a tailwind, that wind is pushing you, so you're going faster. Now let me do this problem wrong, okay? Normally what we would have done is we would have then distributed and we would have said um, TR minus 20 is equal to, oh, 20 T is equal to 360, right? If I look at that, right? Distribute that, I would get that. Then over here, if I distribute that, I would get TR is plus 20 T is equal to 440. Now, we don't know how to solve something where the variables are mixed together, TR, TR. In the previous problems, when we try to solve these, we would have R by itself, plus or minus T by itself, and then we can do a substitution or elimination to isolate a variable. But that's not gonna work here because when I distribute, I get this TR thing. That's what makes this different. Now, the way I wanna solve this is that I notice that this T and that T are the same. So I want what I wanna do is I wanna isolate this T. Now let me do it. It's easier to understand it when you just see me do it. So let's take this equation. Um, R minus 20. And then let's get the T all by itself. Okay. Now this will cancel. And I get this equation. T is equal to... Um, 360. Good. Here's one isolation. Now let's isolate this one. Let's do it the same way. R plus 20 T is equal to 440. I'm going to divide both sides by R plus 20. This will then cancel and I get T is equal to 440 over R plus 20. Okay. So the thing that we want to concentrate it on is this here and this here. We know that T is equal to 360, right? That's what T is equal to. But we also know T is also equal to Okay, now if we ignore that t, we have this is equal to this. And a lot of you will go, uh, that doesn't make it a lot easier. Actually, it does. What we can then do is cross multiplication. This times this is equal to this times that. So I get 440 is equal to 360. So then I get 440R minus 8800 is equal to 360 plus 7200. And then now we can just solve for R. So let me 
add to both sides. And let me subtract 360R to both sides. And I should get, um, what's this over here? I should get 80R is equal to um, 1600. Well, I'm sorry, 16,000. And then I should um, divide both sides by 80. So this zero will cancel. And then I should get R is equal to 200 miles per hour. So this is the speed of a helicopter in still air. Okay, now, finally, last problem. This is a pretty unhappy problem. Uh, it's close to what we did prior, but it's a little bit harder. Now, let's look at this. Chester rode his bike uphill 30 miles per hour and then back downhill at one mile per hour faster than his uphill speed. If it took him one hour longer to ride uphill than downhill, what was his uphill rate? Okay, so we have um, uphill, downhill, rate times time is equal to distance. Okay, so Chester rode his bike uphill 30 miles and then back downhill. Okay, so we assume that if uphill was 30 miles, when he's going back home, uh, downhill is 30 miles. At one mile per hour faster than his uphill speed. So his downhill speed was faster. So if this is R, this will be R plus 1. If it took him longer to ride, uh, one hour longer to ride uphill than downhill. So uphill, it took a little bit longer. What was his uphill rate? Okay. Now, the sucky thing about this is that I have a T plus 1 here and an R plus 1 here. Previously, whenever we did these problems, we had something ugly over here, but over here was very clean, T, T, or R, R. Okay. Now, we're going to attack this problem by either isolating the T or isolating the R. What I chose in this problem is to isolate the R, but you could isolate the T if you want. So let's start with this equation over here. We get um, R, T plus one is equal to 30, and then let's isolate it by dividing by T plus one. Okay, so here, right here, is my first equation, right? Now let's do the same thing here. I'll get r plus 1, t is equal to 30. So now I'm going to distribute tr plus t t is equal to 30. Now remember, we're trying to isolate the r. That doesn't look like an r. It looks more like an r, but not a great one. We're going to try to isolate that. So what we have to do now is we have to subtract t from both sides. So now I get tr is equal to 30 minus t. And then we're going to divide both sides by t. So when I isolate this R, I get this. When I isolate this R, I get that. It's ugly, but it'll still work. Okay, now, we have R is equal to 30 over T plus 1. And then we have R also equal to 30 minus T divided by T. 
Now, if we just ignore that, we can do a cross multiplication. And we get 30t is equal to um, t plus 1, 30 minus t. And then I get um, 30t is equal to, now let's FOIL this, right? Let's multiply it, this times this, this times that, um, this times this. And then let's simplify it. So this and this subtract when we combine like terms. Okay, now I know this doesn't look better, but it is. So because we have a square, we're going to have to factor. So we have to make one side equal zero, and usually you like your square term to be positive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the t to this side. Um, and then I'm going to bring over the tw uh, 29t. And I'm also going to bring over the 30. So we should get something that looks like t squared. When I subtract the 29 from the 30, I should get plus t minus 30 is equal to 0. And then when we factor this, we should get t plus 6. t minus 5. So t is equal to minus 6. t is equal to 5. And since we're not working with negative time, we're just going to cross this out and say, t is equal to 5. Now, let's double check to see if this is what we want to solve. What was his uphill rate? Well, that's his uphill rate. We discovered t. We need to find out what r is. So let's take this equation and figure out what r is. All right. r, t plus 1, is equal to 30. I'm going to take that 5 and put it inside here. r, 5 plus 1 is equal to 30. 6r is equal to 30. If we divide both sides by 6, I get r is equal to 5 miles per hour. And that is his uphill rate. Well, thank you for watching this video. If it was helpful, please like and subscribe so other people can find it. Thank you.